Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, your girl Brittany here, and the other day I shared a slimline card over on my Instagram, and some people have asked if I would do a tutorial on it. Um, if you guys haven't um, been following, Wandy Sweets had did a little giveaway and one of her live, and of course, you know, we would love to get these dyes or and we all know how long it takes to get things from AliExpress. So I went ahead and created one just by using my paper trimmer. Yes, I can create it on my cutting machines, but I wanted the ability to go ahead and do it freehand as well. This I used the die on to cut out my little flowers here to make it into a shaker. And today we are going to make this one together. And instead of using a die, I used one of my punchers to make the shaker. And you can see it's a little bit thinner than um, this one here. And I will explain why I did that in the video. So if you want to see how this is made, make sure you stay tuned. <laughs> Um, you can make a business envelope with your envelope punch board but to do like the top flap opening from the top part instead of the long way this is how I made mine so you're gonna need a sheet of paper or cardstock that measures seven and three-fourths by eleven and an eighth and then on the seven and three-fourths side you're gonna score at half an inch and at four and one-eighth then you're gonna flip it, doesn't matter which way, but I already have my scores right here. <laughs> you're gonna flip it to the 11 and 8th side, and you're gonna score it at 2, and then at 10 and 5 eighths. And don't worry guys, I will have these measurements down below in the description box for you too. So that's all the scoring you're gonna do. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna varnish my score lines. So what we're going to do next is this piece right here. So you have this tiny little square, you have this long rectangle, and this long rectangle. We're going to cut out this right one just up to the score line. And then we're going to also cut out this little square here. And then up top here. If I flip it this way, so I have this tiny rectangle here, and then the big rectangle, and then big rectangle. We're going to cut out this tiny rectangle and this big rectangle to the left here. Alright, so you should have a piece that looks like this. So you have your one long piece, one short piece, and then you have your bigger piece up top. So you're going to push these little flaps in here. And this is the part that's going to adhere this piece together. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to add it to my flaps. And then fold the bottom piece over and then add the glue there too. And just fold over my flap, making sure that everything is lined up. And this envelope makes a three and five eighth by eight and five eighths. So you pretty much have like a coin envelope here. And then um, doing the top flap, you can do whatever you want to do. You can do your border punch, you can do a corner punch, um, angle. Um, punch it if you like so whatever tickles your fancy so that's just the envelope part and now we're gonna do the card part now to do the card it depends if you're gonna add a little bit of dimension to it um, the example that I had for that I shared on my Instagram that had um, foam tape and it had I made it into a shaker and everything so it, fit, it felt a little snug trying to get it inside the card so if you want to add that dimension you want to have a piece that measures 
three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Otherwise, if you're gonna make it just completely flat, you can do it at three and a half by eight and a half. So because I'm gonna add some dimension to mine, like I said, it is eight and three eighths by eight and or what I say three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. And I'm just the reason why um I have two of them is because I'm going to mat it on top of the black one. So then that way it can be a little bit heavier because when you are doing like a shaker and doing foam tape, you want to make sure that you have a sturdy base. Otherwise your stuff is going to kind of cave in a little bit. So I'm going to adhere these pieces together. And then this next part, you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do. So if you want to do... If you want to keep it like this, go right ahead. Otherwise, if you want to do a border punch, if you want to do corner punches, um, whatever tickles your fancy, I'm going to use one of my edge punches. I'm going to use this scalp one here. And so I'm just going to go in and start going around my border. So I want it to be a little cute on the side there. And then this, um, depending on what you do, if you are going to do anything on the side, um, that all depends. I like to do my sides first and then measure how big I want my inside matting piece to be. Because otherwise you can measure it to be too far out and then you brought it too far in. So with mine, I'm going to do it at about two and a half. For my top matting piece and this was already eight and three eighths so I'm gonna bring it down to eight and a quarter so I'm gonna do two and a half by eight and a quarter So when I put it on here, it'll sit up top like this with a little bit of dimension. And then it'll easily fit nicely inside my envelope as well. Because again, it might look might look a little bit uh, too small. But when you add the dimension, just like when you're packaging things up in you know, your cellophane bag, when you add dimension, you have to make sure that... Because it'll take up more in your envelope so you have to make sure that it'll fit nice and at least a little bit loosely so it's not getting stuck in there so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna punch some things out so that I can go ahead and make this into a shaker um, you can use your dies you can use your punches um, just whatever you have that works I think I'm probably gonna use some flower punches All right, so now I have that, and I'm going to take a piece of acetate. Actually, for acetate, I don't even use acetate. I use um, laminating pouches. <laughs> hey, when I get them on clearance, and it helps save money, too. So I'm just going to cut this down a little bit so that it'll fit my paper here. The same thing with this one. And then I'm just going to add some um, score tape to these.
so now that's all done so that's gonna set up there like this and I already have my sequin mix made up so I'm just gonna put it in my little areas that I need them in Cute. So then, when it goes in here, it'll be a lot easier to <coughs> be placed in. And mind you, too, still have to map the front and back of this as well. So that will also give a little tension. I had a small little rip, but I can fix that. Um, that'll also give a little bit more tension. So that's why I had cut it down so thin on the sides and then just from here we decorate and go from there alright so here is my finished card here so here is my envelope all matted up and I did one of my little Dollar Tree stickers here cute little songbirds and then I used a sticker for my closure so then open it up and here is my card and then if um, if you do use a dark cardstock like this you can go ahead and mat the back I do have a white gel pen and a white marker so I'm able to write on the back but if you don't have anything like that you want to use lightly colored cardstock or um, of course just mat the back but here's the front I just did some simple decorations because I didn't want to take away from the paper itself and it says live kind daydreamer and then I just did some flowers, another one of the Dollar Tree stickers, and again, um, it's a shaker as well. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. I hope it was a help. If you don't want to wait months for a dye, or um, if you want to mass produce or anything like that, it does give you a way of creating something even without having the dye. I can make this on my machine, but I want to give you an opportunity to see how you can do it just by using your paper trimmer itself and your other tools in your craft room. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the description box. And don't forget, I will have the measurements down below as well. So thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.